the byproducts of using those lenses are the, the focus, the way the focus falls off, the way that the focus breathes when you rack focus, and also the way that the depth of field has texture, the bokeh. As a focus puller, your job is to know the lenses as much as you can. And when I was a focus puller, uh, I shot on mostly spherical Zeiss, Canon, Cook lenses. Those were our tools. The movie crews were using anamorphics and in, at that point, there was really only one company that was making anamorphic lenses and that was Panavision. More or less every movie I ever did was using Panavision anamorphics and towards the middle 80s, Prima anamorphics came along. A lot of the cameramen that I worked for were afraid to use them because they were so sharp and so contrasty. It nearly always ended up in tears when things went wrong on those lenses. So that immediately fascinated me uh, why this was happening and my sensibility comes from the idea that sitting in the cinema you want to see a widescreen movie, you want to feel the 120 degrees at least of the anamorphic frame. You want to see a, the movie projected on the biggest screen possible and know that you're in the movies and for me that's a huge deal and that's why I like to shoot widescreen because I'm thinking about the story being told on the widescreen. I'm not thinking TV. So I like to build the lighting and the ambience and the texture and everything based on the idea that this, the picture is going to be 60 feet wide and 20 feet high. Ladies and gentlemen, the maiden voyage of our newest flagship deserves more pomp and circumstance than we can afford today. I just love the idiosyncratic nature of the lenses and the the focal aberrations and the idea that they are not perfect like our eyes. They're just tools that allow us to tell the story with some added texture. What, what I find is when I'm shooting a movie and I have the lenses that I use, and I've used basically the same lenses for every movie I've ever shot, I know those lenses intimately and what happens when you have a, a cast and you start shooting the movie, you find that the, each cast member has a lens that they look particularly good with. So it could be the 60 on one person, the 40 on another, the 100 on someone else. And when you find that, the physics involved goes out the window and it turns into something else and that could be the face of the the shape of their face or the size of their eyes or something and the lens is reacting to that uh, that's the first thing that would make me decide to pick a certain lens in a sequence the other th part of it is that close focus anamorphic primo lenses that i use they focus down to about two and a half feet, which doesn't sound very sexy in, in today's terms, but on the big screen, two and a half feet on a 40 mil or a 35 mil or a 50 mil or a 75 mil or a 100 mil is a pretty massive close up. You can do a close up on a 40 or you could do a close up on a 100. Uh, it just depends what you're trying to do. But the nice thing about anamorphics is because the frame is so elongated and um, wide, if you did want to shoot a, a wide angle 40 mil close up, you've still got a whole chunk of frame on one side or the other if you frame eccentrically to include other parts of the set or the location or whatever. So it's a, it, it's, Part of the toolkit, the byproducts of using those lenses are the, the focus, the way the focus falls off, the way that the focus breathes when you rack focus, and also the way that the depth of field has texture, the bokeh. What we have done on the last two 
sets of lenses that uh, Panavision have built for us, we have set our focus into the center part of the, the frame so that the top and the bottom sort of drop off to accentuate the bokeh and the anamorphic distortion that you get with the background. We've also included a degree of softness into the lens that means we don't have to put a, a filter on the front of the lens for diffusion. The question I always ask is why would I want to put a $50 piece of glass in front of a $60,000 lens? Well, what, what am I trying to do there? And so I try to think about it the other way around. I wanted to build that into the lenses and I wanted the bloom that I got with diffusers as a part of the inherent character of the, the lenses. In an ideal world, 240 is taken into their, into account when they design their, their uh, sets. The nice thing about it is that uh, because it's so uh, skinny, the frame, that uh, you can have lower ceilings and you can have stuff hanging in frame from above as well as below. So you can easily have texture coming from both up and down on the frame.